Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use silver verb when mixing in Logic Pro 10. So what I'm going to do first is set up silver verb on a bus. So I've got this bus here where I'm using the tape delay. I'm going to replace that with silver verb now. So I'll just click here, go to reverb and silver verb. Okay, so what you see here are some of the most basic and most fundamental features of a reverb plugin. And these will help you to understand how reverb works and how it affects the staging of an element in a mix. First of all, I'm actually going to turn off modulation and I'm going to increase the wet signal, because I've got this on the bus, just because I want to focus on these elements here. The first one, and one of the most critical settings in a reverb plugin, is the pre delay. The pre delay determines not the sort of space that the sound sounds like it's in, but where in that space. If you picture yourself, in the middle of a massive hall and there's a person right at the other end of the hall and they shout to you, what you hear is them shouting to you directly, but you also hear the first reflections. And the first reflections are when their voice collides with the nearest surface and bounce straight to you. When it's just one bounce between you and the source of the sound, that is a first reflection or an early reflection. The time between the dry signal and what you hear from the first reflections is the pre-delay. However, if that person was closer to you, not only would their voice be louder in comparison to the first reflections, but it would also be sooner than the first reflections. That would suggest a longer pre-delay time. So if they're right close to you and they talk to you, the difference between the sound source reaching your ears and the first reflection points is going to be longer. So a longer pre-delay means the sound is more upfront in the mix, but a shorter pre-delay means the sound is more distant from the mix. Another good rule of thumb when using a pre-delay is to use one that sounds too long. So when you're mixing and you're trying to find that right pre-delay setting, find the one that just sounds too long, sounds too detached from the material, and then just bring it back in ever so slightly. But like I said, the pre-delay effectively determines where in the stage the sound is coming from. Our brains use that information to localize sound in the space. So if I want the vocal up front in the mix, I'm going to want a relatively long pre-delay. But if I want it pushed back in the mix, I want a shorter pre-delay, relatively speaking. So let's actually experiment with that now. So I've got this vocal track. I've sent quite a lot of gain to this bus here via this send. Let's have a listen. The wind rushes past my face and through my hair. For the briefest of moments, I feel like I'm flying. The wind rushes past my face and through my hair. Okay, so you could hear as I toggled the mute on this bus that there's quite a distinct difference between no reverb and some reverb. And it sounded all right. It sounded quite good. What I'm going to do now, though, is solo the reverb just so we know what it sounds like. And also, I think I want a bit more gain in this reverb channel because I want to be able to pull the fader down a bit more and when I'm mixing the reverb. So I'm just going to... Load a gain here, go to utility, gain. I'm just going to increase that by 10 dB so that when I'm mixing, 
I've got more fader to work with. I could have also just increased the gain on the send there, but I might want to adjust that as well. So there's no one way to do these things, but that's just kind of how I work. She's past my face and through my hair For the briefest of moments I feel like I'm flying Okay, so now let's experiment with a shorter pre-delay. Wind rushes past my face and through my hair For the briefest of moments I feel like I'm flying Past my face and through my hair. So the shorter pre-delay creates this fairly muddied effect. So I'm going to increase the pre-delay here so that the vocal is still sitting at the front of the sound stage. Wind rushes past my face and through my hair. For the briefest of moments, I feel like I'm flying. Wind rushes past my face and through my hair. For the briefest of moments, I feel like I'm flying. Wind rushes past my face and through my hair. For the briefest of moments, I feel like I'm flying. Wind rushes past my face and through my hair. For the briefest of moments, I feel like I'm flying. Okay, pretty happy with that pre delay setting. And I was also managing the volume of the reverb bus from there. Now moving on to reflectivity, so the reflectivity determines how reflective the surfaces are. So imagine a space where all of the walls and the floor and the ceiling are made of marble. That's going to be really reflective, meaning that the reflections are just going to stick around longer because they're just going to be bouncing off the walls more, bouncing off each other because the surfaces just aren't absorbing so much of the sound. But if the space was full of curtains and soft materials, it'd be less reflective because it'd be absorbing those reflections. Let's experiment with that. Wind rushes past my face and through my hair. For the briefest of As you can hear, a higher reflectivity percentage means that the reflections just stick around longer because they're just bouncing off the walls. I'm going to dial that down a bit because that's quite long. Great. It's a good idea before you start using reverb to kind of have an idea, a rough idea in your mind about the sort of space that you want that vocal sound or any other track that you are mixing to be in. And then you can use the theory of reverb to start navigating towards that goal and then refining by ear from there. The next parameter I'd like to show you is the size. So the size simply determines the size of the space that the reverb is simulating. 
So higher values mean a larger space and lower values mean a smaller space. Using small reverb sizes like this can be really useful to add body to a vocal sound. So if you've got a vocal track and it was recorded in a very dead space and it sounds quite scratchy and it's kind of detached from the mix, you can use a sound like this and sometimes with short pre-delays, not so much to give it a sense of space but just give it a sense of three dimension. For the briefest of moments, I feel like. So you notice there when I bypass the reverb, it just sounds like a recorded track. But when I pull it back on, it actually sounds like a sound in a space. The wind rushes past my face and through my hair. For the briefest of moments, I feel like I'm flying. The wind rushes past my face and through my hair. Great. Now let's have a look at the density of the reflection. So that basically just determines how many reflections there are, the sort of complexity of the reverb. Let's start by dialing it down all of the way. It should sound more like an echo, more like a sort of ping pong effect. Let's bring it down to 10%. The wind rushes past my face and through my hair. For the briefest of moments, I feel like I'm flying. The wind rushes past my face and through my. You can hear how you can more clearly discern between the reflections. Sometimes that's quite appropriate. But if you want more complex reverb, more diffuse, then you go for a higher percentage here. See how it starts to sound more like a delay when I bring that density value down? So it's basically just the complexity of the reverb, the amount of reflections and how diffuse it is. What I'm going to do now for this vocal actually is come back to a sort of setting where it's not in such a big space, but I'm using it more to add body to the vocal which is just one of many applications for using a reverb. The wind rushes past my face and through my hair. For the briefest of moments, I feel like I'm flying. The wind rushes past my face and through my hair. Okay, so I've roughly landed at a setting which I'm happy with in terms of adding body to a vocal sound. What I'm going to do now is experiment with the low cut and the high cut features. So this is just a built-in filter, very useful for just 
EQing your reverb sound, which is very useful in mixing because if, for example, the reverb has just too much bottom end, it might feel really muddy in the mix. So sometimes it's good to isolate the frequency band in which you hear the reverb, especially when you don't want it to sort of interrupt or clash with a lot of other content in that frequency spectrum when you're mixing. So from here, I'm just gonna unsolo the reverb bus. I'm gonna bring the fader down first actually, and then just mix it back in. Wind rushes past my face and through my hair. So right now, the vocal sound is very raw, very scratchy, very sort of in your face and not really in the mix at this point, not really embedded in the mix. And what I'm gonna do actually is first turn it down because it does seem a bit loud. Past my face and through my hair. And now we're going to mix in the reverb. Wind rushes past my face and through my hair. For the briefest of moments, I feel like I'm flying. Wind rushes past my face and through my hair. Okay, so I've blended a bit of that reverb in and now what I'm going to do is toggle the mute button on the reverb bus just so that you can clearly hear the difference between having that bodied sort of reverb sound against just having a sort of scratchy vocal track. Wind rushes past my face and through my hair for the briefest of moments, I feel like I'm flying. Wind rushes past my face and through my hair. For the briefest of moments, I feel like I'm flying. Wind rushes past my face and through my hair. Okay, and from there I just refined the filter inside the reverb just so that it was channeling those reflections into a certain part of the frequency spectrum that I felt was kind of more available in the mix. And what I might do is I'll probably leave that there as its own bus and I'm going to call this Vox Body Verb because it's not going to be the only reverb that I use. I'm going to use another reverb to sit the vocal in the sound stage, but I'm going to leave that one there on its own bus so that I can bring that in to add body when I'm further in the mixing process later on. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.